if that is this and this, for each this, then that, okay? And you'd be writing a good chunk of code. Well, Link is going to be doing a lot of that manual labor for us now. Does that make sense? Okay. Now let me show you a code demo or two that will kind of uh, illustrate some of the other particulars. You know, because right now we were just looking at link real quickly, link to objects. Okay, and always remember, although we all love relational databases and that's where we spend most of our time, link can be applied all over the place. Okay, and if you go to like the Microsoft Research site, you know, they are looking at tons and tons of ways to incorporate Link into other APIs. They already have a whole bunch of things put together for Link to ASP.NET. So I would probably guess in the next release of .NET, we're going to find even more extensions for more things that we do today. Okay. So let me just show you a couple of demos here. And I'm going to begin, I think I'm going to actually begin by talking a bit about Link to XML. Right? Do we all agree that doing XML programming really blows. <laughs> I agree <laughs> because the object model that we have with system.xml.dll is just pretty verbose. It's fine, but it's pretty verbose. Okay? So when you're doing link to XML, it's a little interesting because there are actually two different ways to use this object model. The first way that we can use link to XML is simply as a better DOM. Okay? So you could use link to XML without even worrying about a link query. You just might want to say, I just want an easy, convenient way <laughs> to show the structure of my XML document. I don't want to have to have 10,000 method calls to 10,000 objects. Okay? And you could use link to XML just for that purpose and be done with it. Okay? However, you can also say, here is my XML document that I've loaded up into memory, and now I want to apply link queries to it to find subsets. Okay? So let me begin by looking at some code. And we'll start with the C sharp person, uh, C sharp example first. Okay. So remember now, we, we purposely set a reference here to system.xml.link.dll. Right? So let's take a peek here. I just had a couple of code samples. Let's take a look at this very functional way to build up an XML element. Okay? So if you were to take a look at the system.xml or system.link.xml.dll assembly, it's actually a pretty small assembly. You're going to find a very common naming convention, a capital letter X in front of everything x element, x attribute, x document. You know, there are other things to represent C data sections. There are things to represent processing instructions. Okay? So look what I'm able to do here. I'm going to define a topmost element called inventory that has a sub-element with further sub-elements. And by doing a little bit of creative indentation, that looks exactly like the actual element that I'm going to put together. So again, notice the lack of 7,000 lines of code. <laughs> right? Notice the lack of having to make a whole bunch of method calls. Here's another example which is a little more robust. This time I want to make a full-blown document with my XML declaration and a code comment, an XML comment, and a root element and some sub-elements. Right? And now I just save it out to a file. Right? Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now this again is pretty sweet if you're doing C sharp. Visual Basic programmers have it even better. Okay. And this is one thing that I was pretty jealous about. Okay. Because <laughs> I mean this is a great step in the right direction. And again, if you if you kind of look at this code, notice how I'm actually only directly declaring one variable of type XML document and into his constructor. I'm passing in another object and into that constructor another object and so on and so on and so on. Okay? A Visual Basic programmer could write the same exact code. Right? Now the one thing that would make this a little tedious in Visual Basic would be the underbar, the line continuation character. Right? Because you wouldn't want to have that in one big long code statement, it would suddenly become unreadable. Well Visual Basic programmers have a pretty nice treat. They have something called XML literals. Right? 
So let me just kind of show you that real quick. As the name implies, an XML literal is a literal blob of XML, which is blended in directly with your VB code. Let me show you this. Let me look at, this is the, a real simple one, OK? When you are using this XML literal syntax, okay, notice here I'm still declaring an X element. That could have also been an X document or whatever I'm trying to declare. Okay? I can now assign to my X element or X document or whatever a blob of XML. Okay? And for those that have worked with inlining calls in classic ASP or ASP.NET, does this look familiar? What am I doing there? Yeah, I'm inserting an executable code statement to get back a value, right? So I'm incorporating it into my, my declaration, so I'm getting a car called Sid. <laughs> One day I, I will not have a car example, I promise you, but I just keep using it. So, but look how sweet that is, right? Now, if we start to look at, like, IntelliSense, right? You know, I could actually apply, and I'll show you another example in a second here, all those XML literals, the IDE treats them as real objects, right? So I really did create here a, a sub X element and some X attributes, okay? So like for example, if I were to say you know, right here, I have real functionality there, okay? Let me show you another cool example of what we can do. And if you were to compile this down, it would look just like the C sharp code I just showed you. Okay, be the same underlying plumbing. Let me show you one other cool thing here. When it comes to applying link queries, it would look the same that we've already seen. It would just be we're applying it to an XML document, right? So if we wanted to, I could do the same exact thing in C Sharp and VB. Yet again, though, VB wins out. Okay, they have something which is access properties. So check out some of the wicked things I can do here. Okay, so up on top, I have loaded up a local file called inventory.xml. So I'm just hydrating right, the file into memory. So that's just a local file on my hard drive. Okay? And now I'm going to take this variable, and I'm going to pass it into a series of methods. Right? So let's pass it into get all pet names. Okay, look at what I'm able to do. This is the incoming XML document. My link query can directly specify elements and attributes that I'm trying to navigate to. Right? Again, this is a VB only thing. If we were going to do this in C sharp, we would actually have to say my x element dot value dot something, right? Or dot name dot something. Here's another cool example down here. Okay? Let's say I want to start to suck out attributes of an element. Well, there's a special syntax for that too. Select at C, or C dot at car ID in this example. So that would be an attribute of the element that I'm looking at. And again, the groovy thing here is full IntelliSense, right? So I would really hope, what, would, what do you think it would probably be? C Sharp 2009 or 2010, who knows? But whatever the next one is, I would probably guess that we'll have a bit more of this in C Sharp land. Okay, but right now, this is great. In fact, you know, I tell people, hey, if you're doing a lot of XML stuff, just build up all your XML stuff in VB, <laughs> put it in a custom library, and then use it in your C-sharp programs. Because this is just so much slicker. I mean, even though the object model of C-sharp is great compared to the DOM, this is even better, I think. <laughs>